And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a small game called The Little Prince, Make Me a Planet. Now this is, if you can, you see the artwork here, this is based on a very popular, very old uh, children's novel um, based, called The Little Prince, uh, a little kid's book in essence um, thing. The back of the box is actually a scoring track. You don't actually keep score to the end of the game and you don't technically need a scoring track to do so, but it's there for you to do that. Uh, the game is a tile laying game, although the tile laying is almost superfluous. Let me show you what I'm talking about and then we'll be back. In this game, each player is building a planet. There are four stacks of tiles to build the planet. Now essentially, the order doesn't really matter. The placement of the stacks doesn't matter at all. It's more, this is a set collection game, and so the, the planet's more for visual effect than anything else. You're gonna have four of these middle planet tiles when you play the game. Then you'll have four of these outer um, planet tiles of, that go that direction, four that go in the other direction, and then four that go in the corners like this, and that's your planet. However, of course, that looks completely boring. It's because of what's on the other side of all these that really matters. As you can see, there's all sorts of different things that you can have on your planet as the planet is being made. Now, the way that this game works is one person goes first, and that person's going to take tiles equal to the number of players in the game and place them up like that. They then will pick one of those tiles and add it to their planet, and each other player is going to take one. However, turn order is determined by the person who took the tile. They pick who goes next. Then that person takes a tile, and they pick who goes next. Then that person picks a tile, and they pick who goes next. The person who picks last, basically they have one tile, they pick the next stack of tiles and put those in the middle of the table, and people will take from those. Once everyone's planet is finished, the game will end and scoring will commence. Scoring is done based on the characters that you have in the corner. Each of these characters has a different uh, name uh, that they're mentioned in the rules. You, for example, this guy here is the gardener, and here is the little prince himself, and here is the king, and here is the, uh, I don't remember who this guy is here, but I think he's just a, a businessman or something. Now, each of these is going to score differently. For example, the king, if you have one rose, he's, he'll give you 14 points. If you have two, he gives you seven. If you have three, he gives you zero. So at the end of the game, I look on the planet, and lo and behold, I have one rose right there. So the king would score 14 points for me. This guy down here gives me five points times the number of brown sheep that I have, and I have none, so he's worth nothing. This guy up here gives me one, seven points for one bow bow tree and 14 for two of them, and I have two of them, so 14 points from him. And then the little prince gives me one for every box I have, and three as long as I have one of each kind of sheep. Well, I have the white sheep and the light brown goats, so I have six points because I got three for each of them, and then I count the boxes and I see three boxes there, and that's three more points. Some guys give you points for lamp posts on there, some people give you points for suns, some give you points for different sheep, some give you points for these stars that you see all over the place. There's different points that the people give you, and depending on how you pick them is going to be how the game plays. Now, there's a couple things. First of all, these bow bow trees here, you are allowed to have two of them. If you ever get a third one, then all three of them turn over and you start again from scratch. So you can never have more than two because they all go away. Then you can start building up again, but as you can see, that could effectively take away a lot of points from you. Even if you don't have the bow bow, it could take points away from the other people who are scoring. Also, at the end of the game, you're going to count the volcanoes on each person. This guy has four volcanoes. Whoever has the most volcanoes is going to lose points equal to the number of volcanoes that they have. 
And that's essentially how you play the game. Once everyone's scored, whoever has the most points is the winner. As I said at the beginning, it doesn't really matter where the tiles are placed. It doesn't matter if the, you know, the, the, the sun sets on this side or that side. There's no if three, three things are next to each other. So essentially you're collecting four different tiles from four sets. You have 16 tiles. Four of those tiles are more important than the rest. They are the scoring tiles. Um, there's, you know, you're trying not to get trees, although it's very possible that many people in the game, maybe everybody, will be forced to take three trees. There's a lot of trees in the game. I haven't yet played a game where someone's had to take three trees twice, although I've played one where someone got up to five. Um, so I guess that is, it is a possibility. There is, this game is designed by Antoine Baza and Bruno Cathal, who are two of my favorite designers. And so I was very, you know, excited to see them put a game together like this. And I think that this game is great. It's light, it's fun, it's simple. But there's one problem with the game, and that's that whole turn order thing. Now, that's what makes the game. My friend Z uh, was talking about it, and he said that makes the game, where I pick who's next because I'm trying to pick somebody to either hurt them by giving them a tree or uh, hurt them by not allowing them to take the tile that they need. The problem is, is this kind of slows the game down because I look down at all your tiles, I see how you're going to score, I see how you're going to score, I see how you're going to score, how you're going to score. I'm talking five player game. I see how all four other players are going to score and I'll say, okay, I don't know, okay, all right, I guess you. And that can slow the game down. Now the game isn't long. It says here in the box 25 minutes. Yeah, 25, 30 minutes is pretty accurate even with that Although, if you don't have that hesitation, the game would go faster. Now, there is a variant that when you take the prince tiles, or the corner tiles, um, you can keep them face down, and I think that's a good one. I, I, I like that. I play with that variant to see what it's like to keep those hidden, uh, and, and I thought that was enjoyable. I also wonder if the game might be behooved to have a just, I go first, you go first, you go second, then we go around, and then next turn, you go first. But I could see how that's problematic. It is interesting picking things, but I like the variant where you place the tiles face down. That way, uh, I, I can't say, oh, you're going for stars, I better not give you the star tiles. You still can say, oh, you have two trees, let's give you a third tree, or you, I don't want, you know, you need some more volcanoes so that I don't have the most type thing. This isn't a heavy game. In fact, the, it's for eight plus on here. Although I tell you, having played it with kids, it is possible for kids to be very upset when they're forced to take that third tree. Nothing they can do about it, and they have to turn three tiles over. Not a happy experience for them. But other than that, they will enjoy it, collecting it. The artwork is really well done. Uh, well, I mean, it comes from the book, and, but it just it brings forth this whimsical theme to it. The game itself has that, you know, it's, it's a, this bemused game. You're like, oh, this is cool, look at my planet, and each planet will look different every time. So it's not a particularly deep game, but it is a particularly pleasant one. That's the best word I can use for this. It's a pleasant game. It's one that you can play before you play maybe a heavier game or after kind of as a uh, thing of relief. And it does have some unique things I haven't seen. Sure, it's all about having the most stuff and scoring points for different, different items. But it's cool. It's neat. Families will enjoy it. The Little Prince, make me a planet. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.